buddies, this is going to be a reseller vlog. I'm going to tell you the things that I'm shipping out. I'm going to show you one of the items I sold, and we're going to talk about a big money bolo. So there's also going to be a bolo category video thrown in here. I'm also going to show you how to search solds to know if an item actually sold or not, and how to figure it out if you don't know how to do that, because I think a lot of times people search solds and they are misinformed because they're not doing it right. So we're going to talk about that. And then we're just going to talk about some other miscellaneous things as I pull stuff. And I'm going to answer a question that one of my viewers asked in a comment on one of my videos. So stay tuned for that. Lots of information jam-packed into this uh, video. I don't know how short it's going to be, but it is a reseller vlog. So thank you for being here. I would love for you to subscribe and let's get started. Hey, Bolo Buddies, thanks for watching. All right, we are gonna do a reseller vlog with a focus on a Bolo. So I'm gonna show you what I'm shipping out today, and then we're gonna talk about a big money Bolo that you need to be on the lookout for. But the reason we're talking about this Bolo is because I sold something, and many of you are gonna remember it. It was in one of the weirdest places I've ever sourced videos. Do you guys remember that one? It looks like this. Definitely go check out that video to hear the whole story about this item. But let's get into what I sold on Saturday. All right, also I want to talk to you guys about tonight. I'm having my whatnot show and it's gonna be a jewelry show, but what I did during my last show, and if you missed it, you can check out the replay right here, is I threw in some cool vintage figurines, and I'm gonna do that again tonight. So every so often during the show, I'm gonna grab probably a Made in Japan item. I love Made in Japan, and I sourced a whole bunch of amazing items. And I'm going to be mixing those into the show tonight. So just to spice it up, keep it exciting, mostly going to be jewelry, but probably I'm going to say up to 10, maybe a few more. Okay, so this is a tote full of mostly made in Japan, amazing items. So um, this belt obviously is not made in Japan. And this picture is obviously not made in Japan, but some of these cute little items, oh my goodness, like, look how darling she is. They're, I kept them all wrapped in uh, paper. Now, look at these. I think I'm going to bring these tonight. What it says is, there was a little piece of paper attached to it. But this is like the cutest little turtle. I think it's just like a little trinket bag or you could put jewelry in it. But it says, silk turtle bag. So, apparently... I guess this fabric is silk. I don't know. It's kind of textured or I don't know if I'd call it flocked. I'd say it's textured, but look, it's a little turtle, whatever it's made of. That's what they said it was made of. Whoever put the tag on it, they said it's silk. So I have the turtle and I have the swan. So how darling are these? And they're just little bags. So you can use them for whatever you want, but I am going to bring these to whatnot tonight. So I hope to see you guys at the show because I'm going to bring some cuteness. But again, it's mostly going to be jewelry with a mix mixture of some little things like this that are just really, really cute. But these are all these paper are wrapped, wrapped up breakables. You guys know I love breakables. Not really. Um, but these are small enough and easy enough to ship with the jewelry that I think it'll be a fun element to add to my show. So check out my last show at that video that I showed you guys to kind of see how I mix those items in and kind of see an example of some of the items that I was bringing. Here's a little Santa made in Japan. Kind of looks like he's sitting on a toilet. No, that's not a toilet. That's a chair. He's sitting in a chair getting ready to see a little kid and ask him what they want for Christmas. Or items. It's going to be super fun. So I hope to see you at my whatnot show tonight. You guys, if you're not following me, I'm Bolo Buddies over there. All one word, lowercase. I would love to see ya. And if you're not on whatnot already, you can use my referral code down below in the description. I'll try to remember to put it in the comments as well. And you'll get $15 to shop. So that's free money to use. You can use it to buy something from me or someone else. But let's take a peek at something that happened. 
Do you guys remember this amazing shelf that I picked up? Well, you notice it's empty. <laughs> and by the way, see these dusty uh, dishes? These are dishes that I bought, uh, I don't know how long ago. I'm like, I love these. I'm going to ship these. I'm going to sell these. I can't even remember what brand they are. Um, I don't know. What is that? But anyway, I hate shipping breakables. So these have been sitting here for like... Mm, I don't know how long. Years. Years. You can see they have dust on them. And then you have these, which are also incredible. And I heard that these came from a local restaurant near me. And you guys, I'm talking like probably, I don't know, five, seven years. And my husband's like, why don't we use them? And I'm like, well, it's just plates. So I could list these as singles, and I would be willing to ship that, but I just, you know what? They just keep sitting here. They just keep sitting. So that's where they're going to sit. So I just got squirrel moment sidetracked. So let's go back to my uh, shelving unit. Well, how I had this was I had jewelry that I was going to sell in singles on the top. And then I had jewelry here in the middle that was small lots jewelry. And then I had all my crafters jewelry down here. Well, guess what happened, guys? <laughs> it got so heavy that it literally bent and came out of the rail here. So guess what? I got to figure out how I'm going to best use this amazing rack that I picked up at a garage sale. Because how I was using it definitely was not working. My jewelry is now back in totes until I figure out what I'm going to do. This is all crafters, all crafters. Um, I have done some small bundles, you know, where I show like two pounds of jewelry and then we go on to um, another lot. Do you guys want me to do a whatnot crafters show of just crafters lots? Let me know down in the comments or would you like me to mix those into my regular shows? I know a lot of you craft and a lot of these items, some of them just need uh, repurposed. Some of it's wearable, but I feel like it's just not something that I want to bring. Like these earrings are on the original ta uh, tag here, but there's a little bit of discoloration here. So somebody could maybe do something with that, craft with it. So lots and lots of crafters items, but I'm just not sure. I mean, look how great these colors are. I'm just not sure, but I was thinking like one to two pound lots and showing those at the end of the show could be maybe a way to unload some of this to people who need it, who like to repurpose items. This is all just a huge uh, bag of beads. I think it's a quart size bag of just different beads that I found. All right, Bolo Buddy. So I also did a whatnot sale where I created bundles, bundles of 10 to 15 pieces of jewelry that all kind of look good together. So whether or not a reseller is buying this or somebody is buying it to wear the jewelry, I, I don't know. And it really doesn't matter to me. I'm just building beautiful lots for you guys to check out and purchase if you like. This is the video that I put out that shows you all of the different bundles from the last show. And then here is a replay of the live show if anybody wants to kind of check out the format. Now, somebody was saying, I was like, I don't know if people are going to want to see this. And somebody told me, um, it's educational for people that are on whatnot that are looking for different ideas. And I'm like, I never thought about that. And it also is teaching different ways to sell things. Now, I could also list these lots on eBay. So if you have a surplus of jewelry and you're not on whatnot, you could do bundles like this on your selling platforms and just price them accordingly. So I guess it is educational in that way, but I wanted to let you guys know I am having another show like this. If you liked that one, I know so many of you came over and purchased and watched that show, but on July 30th, here's the pop-up of my whatnot. At 10, 15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm doing another show like this. A lot of you say you can't make it to my shows because it's so late. I am doing uh, where it's preloaded. There's 21 bundles up right now. I'm not going to show you those today, but I may show them to you in a future video. 
I'm not sure how many I'm going to do, but right now there's 21 up. They are available for pre-bids. So if you can't make the show, you can go and put in your highest bid and you may win the item. So a lot of people did pre-bids. I think every bundle had a pre-bid at my last show, which is amazing. Thank you guys all so much for the support. So head over to my whatnot, click on the July 30th show, click on the house and go into the... I think it's auction tab, and you'll be able to see all of those bundles if you want to see it before I do the preview. All right, you guys, thanks so much. All right, Bola Buddies, let's talk about beaded vintage purses. And I want to show you the top selling ones to look for. Now, are these going to be easy to find? Probably not, but Bola Buddies, this first item is the one we're going to kind of focus on in this video. So let's dig through this tote, which is always a good time. This one is stuffed full. Um, how do I keep track? Here is my tote system. These all have letters on them. This is my letters room. So this is in tote F. So what I do then is it's under my custom SKU. So now I got to find the item. I have to find it. It's somewhere in here. I remember this is another one of the items from that video. So hopefully it's over on this side, but who knows? It could be anywhere, anywhere. And I don't know if I wanna make you guys suffer through me looking. Oh my goodness. So all of these items are listed. Everything in this room is listed in my eBay store. A lot of the items are cross posted to Mercari and Poshmark. And I use List Perfectly to cross post. If you wanna try List Perfectly, you can get 30% off your first month with coupon referral code BOLOBUDDIES, all one word. And I do have a tutorial video down below, so you can check that out. And it'll show you exactly how to cross post. And I'm telling you, more eyes on your items, more platforms. So it is more work. And for me, I can only handle two more. I was doing Etsy and uh, some Facebook Marketplace and I decided to scale back and just do eBay, Poshmark, and Mercari. And then I added in whatnot. All right, I'm going to get two hands going here and see if I can find this item because I'm not having any luck. So I'll be back. Okay, I removed the little nativity. So here's a little tip. This is Fisher Price Little People. I do have two of these listed right now. This is more of a long tail item. If you can find the figures or you have a complete set, this can be a bolo. I like to part them out and sell the figures uh, like the camel, the Mary and Jesus and Joseph and all the different uh, figures that come with this. I sell them individually typically or in small lots. If I had a complete set, I would probably sell it as a complete set, but definitely a bolo to be on the lookout for. Here it is. Here's the mesh purse. It's not mesh. It's beaded. The beaded purse. And I'm going to show it to you guys up close and personal. So just to show you, I pulled it out and actually some beads fell off. This thing is a mess. But look at all these beautiful beads. It's so pretty. This is the inside. And then here is the amazing, um, how it uh, shuts is just incredible. And I've, there we go. Look. Awesome. So I'm going to put this back in a Ziploc bag to keep everything together for the person that bought it. And I'm going to grab these beads and they're going to go in the bag. I sold. <laughs> it is this one right here. And I listed this December 25th of 22. So it has been listed for a good while. Let's see. December. It's July. Is it July? Yeah. So it's been listed about seven months. Not quite. And it's an antique Victorian filigree frame, beaded purse, reticule, Slovakia, damage, read, TLC. This thing is trashed. My husband actually gave it away. And if you watch my video, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. He gave it away. And you know what? I'm like, do you, do you want that? Because um, I'll, I'll take that if you're just going to like throw it in the trash. Because... He thought this was worthless. And I knew that somebody out there was going to want this item. I sold this for a best offer of $50 with all of this damage. But it has amazing hardware. 
A lot of the beads are still intact. You can see right here it is signed. This is a beautiful piece. Damaged, needs a new home and somebody to repair it. But nonetheless, look at that hardware. It is stunning. So somebody bought this probably going to take the pieces and use them to repurpose into something very, very beautiful. So I put pre-owned TLC damaged parts or repair sold as seen. And again, I took a best offer of $50 for that. So it's got the strap on it. It's got the hardware, which all is in working order and signed. And it really has a lot of beautiful beads still left on it, but not in great condition. So can you sell damaged items? Absolutely. These are micro beaded purses. And this one is Peacocks. And this, this one I just picked because I thought it was cool. It was auction style. It sold for $227.50. So what I found from my research of beaded purses is that the ones with the ton of detail, like the beadwork, is really detailed are the ones that went for the most money. So we're going to keep looking here. This one here is another one that's just a print. And flapper evening bag, beaded art deco deco is the words used in the title. Now, mesh is also a word that's used. And this is from the 1920s. This one actually is not beaded. I'm, I apologize. This one is mesh. I thought it was beaded when I pulled it up because I typed in beaded. Now, it does say beaded in the title. So I'm trying to figure out what is beaded on this. Do you guys see? Huh, that's interesting because mesh is not considered a bead. Mesh is mesh, right? Maybe that was a typo. But anyway, mesh purses are also a big money bolo. I did not really go into the mesh style purses in this video, but yes, definitely be on the lookout for those as well. All right, this one here is title Antique Micro Beaded Jeweled Enamel Frame ADA Grunfeld Austrian purse. Look at this, you guys. Look at the detail. I mean, wow. Right? Wow. And it's got the kiss lock. That's what you call this right here on the top. A kiss lock clasp. A lot of people will use those uh, that term in their title as well. Honestly, there's not a whole lot of photos. I would love a close-up of the beadwork. Now, you can go to the feedback and type in either the item number or the title to see if the item actually sold. For this one, now it doesn't tell you for sure if it actually sold. But if there's feedback, you know that it sold. If there's not, the person that bought it may not have left feedback. So what I do then is I go into the seller's store and I see if they have relisted the item. If I do not see it relisted, my assumption would be that yes, it was a good sale or it sold on another platform because they do not have the item relisted. So I do try to do my homework when I'm sharing with you guys uh, comparables of solds because I don't wanna just show solds because a lot of times things sell that didn't really sell. And I'll give you an example of that here at the end of the video. So this one says beautiful purse, fast shipping, sold for $620. So another problem that you're going to run into when you're searching for solds is you're going to see this line and it's slashed through, which means that an offer was accepted, which can mean anything. I saw or I gave an example in another video of one that was listed for crazy money and they sold it really cheap. And when you're looking at solds and you see the slash through, you kind of think, oh, well, they took a best offer, but it's probably close to their asking price. Well, that's not always true. And I'm going to show you a way to actually check. But this one right here is an antique, again, 1920s with this Venetian scene. It's a beaded purse and the beadwork is just incredible. But if I saw that at a garage sale without doing this video, I may not have known that this was worth as much as it is. I may have picked it up because I'm like, oh, wow, that's cool. But some of these go for crazy money. And we're going to talk more about that. If you go to eBay and you click on the research tab, you can go into Terapeak and you can type. I usually cut and paste the title into the search bar. I hit search and then you go down here and you see here's the item. And I can see that this item actually sold for 600. 
So they had it listed for $699.99, and this was the best offer that was accepted on this item. Here is another one. Rare Antique Paris NYC French Art Deco Beaded Purse, Plain Spirit of St. Louis. And you can see it's got all of those keywords here in the title that are on the purse. This is also a very detailed beaded purse. They've got the ruler to show the size. You guys can show size however you choose. I recommend doing it in the photos, especially for hard goods like this. They show you the detail of the strap, any defects, any issues with the item. This is a very, very old item. This sold for $698.88 plus shipping with 34 bids. Now, this one, there was no feedback, but the item was not relisted and there were 34 bids. If you want to go in and see the bid history, what you can look at right down here, you can see that they started this at 99 cents. So they either didn't know what they had or they knew what they had and they knew that the market was going to drive this up on auction. Risky, but if it's something that's super, super rare, you know, sometimes you take a gamble and really get that interest, drive up the interest. That's kind of what I do on whatnot. I start my items low and just hope that things get bid up. A lot of times things sell for less than I hope for, but a lot of times also, you know, things sell for a good price. So you just never know with auctions. That's on any platform that does auctions. You can see here that the winner had 2,116 feedback. There were 11 unique bidders with 34 bids, and this was a seven-day auction. So because this person had a higher amount of feedback, if this was a zero, that would be another, maybe you could question whether or not it got paid for. But because they have a lot of feedback, more than likely this was a good sale and based on my research. So let's look at this one right here. I clicked on it. This was the highest sold bag. And when you go in, you see relisted this item. So that tells me that the buyer did not pay. The seller went in and clicked relist. When you click on relisted item, you can see they did an auction again. It got zero bids and they relisted it again. And now it is up for auction for $700. So that is one way to know that the item did not sell. So let's go back. At, okay, here we are. So that was the first one that I looked at because it was the highest sold, but it didn't actually sell. It looks like it sold. It actually sold, but it did not get paid for. So now we're going to look at the ones that are trending at the highest, the highest solds. I showed you some of these. Some of these I did not show you, but just look at the detailed pattern work with the beads. These seem to be the highest selling beaded purses. Now this one does not have a lot. Uh, it's just black beads, but right here you have the cameo frame, which probably is what it made this really special. Don't know for sure. I'm not a bag expert, but look at the detail of all these high dollar selling bags. So definitely be on the lookout for anything that is beaded and do your homework, research them. If you can get it for a good price, just grab it and run but look how beautiful these are. This one's mesh. So mesh, beaded, just type in vintage purse and you can search high to low and see some of the different ones. I actually have beaded in my search because that is my focus because of the item I sold. So let's dig a little deeper into the item. Now let's go back over here to this and let's search because I want to show you that not all beaded purses are a big money bolo. So also when you're researching, you can search lowest first and you're going to see lots of beaded bags that did not sell for a lot. And a lot of times it's simply because the seller started the auction at 99 cents and the interest was not there. Had the seller started this at a buy it now at a higher price, maybe these would have went for more, maybe not. Because when you do a seven day auction, you're depending on at least two people, if you start your item at 99 cents, at least two people wanting your item and bidding it up. What I always do and say is search solds. If your item is hard to find or rare, 
start your item at the price you would list it for at a buy it now. And this is a great way to feel, feel out the market. So if you think, oh, I'm going to put this on a buy it now for $50, start it at $50. You never know. Two people may really want your items and you may get $100 for it. And I'm telling you this, I started this on auction. I think I did a couple auctions on it and it did not sell. I did start it higher, if I remember correctly, and it didn't sell. So I put it on a buy it now of $100 and I ran a 38% off sale. So it was on sale for $62. And then I ended up taking a best offer of 50. All right, so this item I'm awaiting payment for and I'm hoping I'm gonna get payment. Um, it ended up getting three bids and sold for 43.66. If you find this item brand new with everything in it, it is definitely a bolo. Mine was pre-owned and not in complete condition. It was missing items. So let me just show you my photos. I did try to show what was in the back here and somebody actually asked me if everything was there. So I ended up pulling out everything that was in it and adding additional photos. And what I found was that everything was not there. And it also had this inside of it. So this is to another kit. So the person that bought this got a bonus uh, item. And I can't remember what this is called, but if you find these, definitely pick them up because people will buy them individually. When I listed this originally, I did not catch that this was not a part of the kit or I probably would have listed that separately. But anyway, really nice set, definitely a big money bolo if you find it complete new in the package and still did really well sold as is and it sold for 43.66. Now, if the buyer does not pay, I will be relisting this item. And I'll have to decide if I want to take out this or leave it in. So, I could sell this separately. I'll probably leave it in just because uh I'm lazy and I don't have a lot of time to take listings apart and recreate them when it's already done. So, that's like doing work twice and that doesn't really make sense to me. So, that is probably what I'll do. What I recommend you do is take this out and sell it separately. You'll make more money. I guess what I'm going to say on that one is don't do what I do. All right, we're going over to tote 24. This is a bread and butter bolo. Um, that's items that I sold for $35 or less on eBay that I sourced cheap. Where is tote 24? Where are you? This is my number room. So I have my letter room and my number room. And I'm not seeing it, so let me find it. <laughs> and then I'll come back and show you what I sold. Oh, here it is. What am I looking for? <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This sold for $7 and the buyer paid shipping. I do charge the buyer's shipping. Look at this beautiful quilt. It's a quilt top. Um, I do charge the buyer's shipping on eBay. They pay the shipping. And I'm not seeing what I'm looking for here. My goodness, look at these little Teletubbies. You guys remember Teletubbies? I sold these. These are Halloween gloves. $7, buyer paid shipping. These came out of a thrift store mystery box back when I used to get uh, mystery boxes from the thrift store that were either toys, Halloween, Christmas. This came out of that. It's Hope 40. I think this is called Mighty Max. It is a toy. Ugh. There it is. It's really small. It's kind of like uh, the Polly Pockets, only it's not. It is made by Bluebird. I sold this for a best offer, I believe, of $8 in the buyer paid shipping. You can see it says Bluebird Toys on the bottom. It's from 1992. And these come with little figures. So if you can find the replacement figures, you can sell them individually as well. But I sold this as a replacement part. The next item I got out of a mystery toy box from auctions, or no, I'm sorry, it was a mystery, uh, just a mystery box. It had toys in it, but it had a mix of things. And you guys can see that whole video on my channel. 
This is not something that I list all the time, but it was in the box, so I decided to list it. Now let's see if I can find it. These are awesome. Is it in here? No. Where is it? No wonder I couldn't find it. It's teeny tiny. I was thinking it was bigger than this, but it is a manual, a booklet manual uh, for a model. And I sold this for $10.54 plus the buyer paid shipping. Now, what I will say about ephemera or paper products is a lot of times they are long tail, but I got $10.54 plus shipping out of this. If you're looking for inventory, check out T Auctions for You over on YouTube. Um, she does sell to resellers and a lot of times she will do a T-Bull, which is a box of reseller items. So you pay for one price for the box, usually with free shipping, and then she ships it to you and you list the items and sell them for a profit. So this came from Auctions for You. I'll link her down below. So this is all jewelry that I have listed, but um, I sold this on Poshmark. I got an offer of $7. I took it. Poshmark took $2.95. Anything, I believe, under either $10 or $15, it's automatically a $2.95 fee. Now, they made the offer, so there was no discounted shipping. And this is a handcrafted brooch, 4th of July. So what does this tell me? Keep things listed all year long. It is now past the 4th of July, and I still sold this. Was it big money? No, I can't even remember where I got it. I sold it for seven dollars poshmark took new two dollars and 95 cents so my profit on this was four dollars and five cents minus cost of goods which was probably anywhere from 25 cents to 50 cents i probably didn't pay much for it but just a super cute handcrafted item but moral of this story is keep things listed all year long christmas sells all year long a lot of times people will say should i wait to list my christmas items that's up to you i don't you may get more near christmas but Christmas sells all year long. I had a question on my YouTube channel, so let me pull it up and I'm just gonna discuss it right here, right now, because it was a good question, but I don't know that I have the best answer. So what they said is, could you do a video on how you split your time? For example, sourcing, listing videos, etc. Do you pick a day and focus on one thing? Do you set a calendar? Thanks. <laughs> I'm not a calendar person. I really don't like schedules. I got into, like I worked full time and I quit working full time to do reselling full time. And one thing that I love, love, love about reselling is that I get to make my own schedule. But the best part is, is I really don't have to have a schedule. Now, I'm a very motivated person. I like to work. So I am always doing something you know, it's like, do I set days that I source? No, not really. Now, since I have started whatnot, things have been a little trickier. I'm not going to lie. I have been having a show. I've been trying to do a schedule, which I really don't like schedules. But I feel like if I let you guys know when I'm going to be on, you know, roughly certain days at the same time, that is helpful for people to remember. And when you're having a sale you want people to know about it, right? So I have been going on on Tuesday night, Friday night, and Sunday night at 10, 15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, that's what I've been doing the past couple months. Is it going to stay like that? I, I can't say for sure. I kind of like this schedule. And because of that, I do kind of have to tweak when I'm doing my videos and when I'm recording for YouTube, when I'm listing on eBay. Right now, I'm listing on eBay whenever I have a little bit of time. But a lot of prep time goes into figuring out what I'm going to bring to whatnot and how I'm going to do that. And I know you guys see me pulling from bags, but I do like to sort my jewelry into bags that are, like I talked about in the beginning, my single items that I'm going to sell individually, my items that I'm going to sell in small lots, and then my crafter's items. So the jewelry does need sorted. A lot of times I am buying in bulk. So it does need sorted. That takes a lot of time. So I'm usually on whatnot 
I usually go on at 10 15 and I'm usually on until 3 a.m. So come hang out. Um, I love being live on whatnot. It's so fun. I love hanging out with you guys. I love selling live. It's so funny because I talk to you guys about listing high and waiting on the right buyer. That is kind of my go-to for eBay and Poshmark and Mercari. But for whatnot, I'm starting my items low and giving you 30 seconds to bid on it, sometimes 20 seconds. So it's completely different than what I'm used to. And I love it. Surprisingly, I love it. I thought, I'm going to hate this. I'm going to hate this. This is a absolutely against everything that I talk about, but it's a different platform. It is a different um, business model. So it's just different. So sourcing, when do I source? Whenever there's an opportunity, like this weekend, there was a great garage sale and I went and got all those made in Japan, awesome figurines. I went on, was it Friday? And then I went back on Saturday and when I went back on Saturday, the items were half off, which is awesome because I'm bringing these items to whatnot. I'm starting them low and they may go for my my asking price or they may get bid up. Again, it's going to depend on who is in my audience. So I hope you guys will come over to my whatnot show. Um, listing, sourcing videos. Okay, I do a video a day. I don't recommend it. I don't, I don't. <laughs> but what I have run into is... I started doing a video a day and now I feel like to maintain, I need to continue to do a video a day. I keep telling myself I'm going to cut back on YouTube and then I keep doing a video a day. There are many, many YouTubers that only do one video a week, two to three videos a week. I probably do more than I should. I'm just going to be honest with you. So if you're thinking about YouTube, just know that that video that you're watching that might be 15 or 20 minutes, probably took two to three hours to make. So 30 days, we'll say average in a week, uh, in a month, <laughs> 30, day <laughs> 30 days in a month, let's say average. So you got anywhere from 28 to 31 days. That's a lot of hours that I'm putting into YouTube. I do love YouTube, but with everything that I have going on, I feel like my eBay is suffering a little bit. And you're going to see, I didn't sell a whole lot today because I'm not putting in to my eBay store. I'm not listing as much as I used to, but I'm bringing in incomes in other areas. So I am diversifying where I put my time. So where you put your time is where you're going to see your profits. So if you decide to cross post, like I sell on eBay, and then I cross post to Mercari and Poshmark, I am going to see sales on Poshmark and Mercari also. So those are other streams of income. So I'm doing YouTube, whatnot, eBay, Poshmark and Mercari, five things. So yeah, I mean, there's no really, I guess the short answer is no, I don't have a schedule. I don't keep a calendar, but because of whatnot, I am kind of I know that on Wednesday nights, I kind of prepare for my videos. And then on Thursday nights, that's my record night. And then I edit all through the week at different times of the day. I don't know if this is helpful to anyone. If you're a YouTuber and you sell, it's a lot. It's a lot. I'm not going to lie. So uh, yeah, no schedule here. Other, I, I try not to have a schedule. I If there's a day that I don't want to work, I don't work. <laughs> now, does that happen very often? No, it doesn't. I'm usually, uh, I usually work every day, seven days a week. I usually do not take a day off, but I do take time away from reselling every single day. So make time for yourself for sure. Um, but yeah, yeah. Sourcing. I don't know there for a while I was going to the bins all the time and it just depends on what, like I used to garage sale all the time. I loved it, loved it, loved it. But now that I'm doing whatnot with a focus on jewelry, do you find tons of jewelry at garage sales? No, but I found these amazing made in Japan. And I'm like, I'm going to bring those in to my jewelry sales. So we'll see how it goes. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And thanks for watching.